So for number two, we want to rotate the area between uh, beneath this blue curve about the y-axis. And we're going to use the shell method to do it. So for the shell method, um, we're just going to take this height here, which is the height beneath the blue curve, right? And it's described by wherever it touches this function, sine of x squared. And then we're going to rotate it like so. Um, and so when we rotate it, it forms this cylinder, and the cylinder is actually um, is actually empty, right? So maybe I'm going to draw it like this. And then when we when we open it, it's like we took a sheet of paper and we just curled it around. So this is actually an area, um, and it's an area as a function of x because the further that I go into this, it's going to change, right? If I were to evaluate it further on the x-axis, um, it would be the cylinder would be bigger like this, right? So this area does change as a function of x. Now we can see here that my volume is basically going to be the sum of all these um, of all these cylinders, these hollow cylinders, from zero all the way out to root pi. So I'm going to set up my integral. My volume is from zero all the way to root pi of ax dx. This just means that we're summing up these areas as a function of x. Um, from 0 to root pi. So now let's um, <clears throat> let's find an expression for it. So the um, let's think about how we're going to describe this area, right? Well, this bottom part right here, it is just the circumference, like so. It's the biggest part. And the circumference of any circle is given by 2 pi r. Um, and now we have to think, how do we describe this radius? Well, the radius here is just the distance between from 0 all the way out to wherever it touches on my x-axis. So it's just 2 pi x, right? Wherever I'm at on my x-axis, maybe if I'm over here, that is going to be my radius. It's going to be this whole distance, right? So, um, <clears throat> so with this being said, it's going to be 2 pi x because the, the radius is just wherever I'm at on my x-axis. And now let's think about this height. Well, this height here is just the height of the function, right? It's just wherever it touches this graph right here. Um, that's the whole point, is that when I was revolving it, I took the height, and then I took this, and then revolved it like so. So we can see here that the height is actually described by the function sine of x squared, right? So <clears throat> my area, my a of x, my area as a function of x, is given by base times height, so 2 pi x, times sine of x squared. So once I have this, I am ready to integrate. Uh, <clears throat> therefore, my volume is equal to, I'm going to put my pi outside, because it's a constant, the integral from 0 to root pi of 2x, 2x times sine of x squared dx. So um, once I'm here, I can integrate it. And now to integrate it, I'm going to have to do u substitution, right? Um, because I, it's not so easy to just find the antiderivative of it. So what we're going to do here is, let me just raise this. Um, we're going to say that u, u is equal to x squared because I want my antiderivative to be sine of u. And therefore, du is going to be, um, I'm going to take the derivative of u, 2x dx. So once I have this, I can make this easy substitution right here. So that's the integral from 0 to root pi. Um, whenever I see x squared, I'm going to substitute it by u. So this is sine u. And then because I have a 2x dx there, uh, I'm going to change that to a du, right? Um, maybe I'm just going to highlight this uh, where du here is 2x dx. So du, I substituted it for this 2x times dx, right? And then um, my u, I just substituted for x squared. So I have all the variables to substitute. Now I have a very easy antiderivative, right? Um, because the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. So this is equal to negative, um, negative cosine. Oops, I forgot my pi outside. Is pi times the negative cosine of u, so 
pi times negative cosine of x squared, because now I'm going to plug in back my u, um, x squared. And then from here, we're going to we're going to go evaluate it from 0 to root pi. So once we have this, we are basically just going to evaluate these boundaries. So that is pi, I'm going to put the negative outside, negative pi times uh, cosine of root pi squared. So it's just cosine of pi, right? Minus cosine of 0 squared is just cosine, uh, that's just 0. And then this is equal to negative pi times cosine of pi is negative 1. And then minus cosine of 0 is 1. Therefore, this gives us negative pi times negative 2. Um, and so the answer is just 2 pi. And that's the volume that we get. Um, and we can see that this is a really easy method, whereas if I were to integrate it by um, slicing, it would be really complicated because... Let me erase this. If I integrate it by slicing, it's like I'm summing up these circles like so vertically. But the problem is that the lower boundary here for the smallest circle is the same as the upper boundary. So you're going to end up with like pi f of y squared minus pi f of y squared because you would do the bigger circle minus the smaller circle. And this would just go to zero. Um, so that would be very messy. And so we like in this case, we do like um, using the shell method.